I asked my bride to remove her teeth before each of our special nights. Despite the big age difference, Bethany and I had a blast. But my mother couldn't come to terms with it. Put on a robe and give your mother a minute of your time. In order to destroy our relationship, she even gathered compromising evidence. Your fiancé forgot to tell you something. Look! But I didn't want to look. I threw the folder in the trash because I fully trusted Bethany. In return, I handed my mother an invitation to our wedding. Are you serious? You know how I feel about this relationship. Nothing can destroy our relationship. That same evening, Bethany got the folder out of the trash can and offered to tell me what was in it. But it didn't matter to me. Bethany was honest, and whatever happened in the past belonged in the past. It's just that I am 30 years older than you. Bethany felt a bit insecure about the age gap and how people would judge us. When the saleswoman at the boutique called her my mother, I stood up for her and chose the most revealing dress for her. I thought that the problem had been solved, but I didn't know that my mother was watching us, ready to upset my bride on the happiest day of our lives. Hmm. As it turned out, my mother bought the same dress as Bethany. My bride didn't have a plan B, so without hesitation, I took off my tuxedo and put some jeans on. Get that dress off, honey. Let's get married in casual clothes. Our appearance caused a real impression among the guests. The only one that was angry was my mom. You leave me no choice, Bethany. During the ceremony, the priest asked, If anyone sees any reason why these two should not be wed, at that moment, my mother pushed my father forward and told Bethany that she could have him. Take him if you want. Just don't ruin my son's life. Nobody understood what was going on. So my mom grabbed the microphone and admitted that she had stolen Bethany's fiancé when they were young, my father. That's why my mother was convinced that our marriage was just an act of revenge. You have achieved your goal. Now, and this circus. My fiancé said that she didn't want my father. I am not here for a young body or revenge. I really love Sam. You've raised him well. When Bethany gave up on my dad, my mother just stood there in shock. Her argument didn't work. I grabbed my mother's hand and supported her. She felt
felt lonely after he moved out. So I assured her that she wouldn't lose me after he got married. On the contrary, our family would only get bigger. Finally, Mom realized that the only one seeking revenge was her. She got over her pride and apologized. Not only that, but my parents also gave us their blessing. The priest got the ceremony back on track, and Bethany and I finally became one. Age, weight and height are just numbers. They can't be used to measure love. I forced my 40 years old wife to sit in an ice bath because I didn't like the fact that she looked like an old woman. John, I'm getting out. I'm terribly cold. Enjoy it. But Emily was weak. She jumped out of the bathtub like a spring. Your pursuit of youth is becoming dangerous to my health. My wife was ready to come to terms with aging. With all the wrinkles, saggy skin, and pale complexion. Hmm. But I wasn't. My attempts to slow down the process only gained momentum. The next day, I decided to quit my job. How could I stay young while working at the nursing home? I was surrounded by lonely and shriveled people there. <gasps> that evening, I let my wife know about my decision. She was shocked. After all, we relied on my salary. But I convinced Emily that everything would be fine. We have a whole life ahead of us. It's enough time to earn money. Then I invited her to celebrate my freedom. <laughs> Emily thought we'd go to a fancy restaurant. But that's old fart entertainment, and I didn't like that. That's why we went to a new, trendy nightclub downtown. I was happy, as that was exactly what I was looking for. Dozens of young, progressive guys and girls enjoying life. I immediately led my wife to the dance floor so she could feel the atmosphere. But Emily didn't like that idea at all. And after a few songs, she grabbed her chest, sat down in a corner and threw a handful of pills into her mouth. John, I don't feel well because of this loud music. Let's go home. I was not going to indulge her elderly whims. So I sent the unfortunate lady home to sleep. and started learning all about the new trends. Bro, how do you like the party? Say a few words for my blog. The next morning, I woke up my wife at 6 a.m. Wake up, you old crone. It's time to make some money. I told my wife about how I met a famous influencer and the way he made a fortune. We'll be filming a sports blog. Get dressed, we're going for a run. But Emily wasn't thrilled about it. John, I still feel ill after yesterday. Get me my pills from the bathroom, please. When I opened her medicine cabinet, 
It dawned on me. I was sure Emily's aging was all in her head, and that she could get her youth back. So I replaced my wife's medicine with regular aspirin. And my theory worked. Emily didn't notice the swap. Soon after, she felt better, and we went for a run. But before we managed to run a single block, my wife grabbed her chest. At first, I thought she was pretending, because she wasn't used to it. But as I got close to her, I realized that the situation was much worse than I thought. John, I can't get up. Call 911. Emily was hospitalized. The doctor told me that my wife needed more rest. That made me furious. <laughs> rest? Age is just a number. But the doctor insisted that my wife should lead a peaceful life. Otherwise, she could have a heart attack. <gasps> I had to wait for Emily to recover. Mentally, I said goodbye to a fun life. But then... <gasps> a pretty nurse walked out of my wife's ward. Your mom is fine. She's sleeping now. At that moment, I knew that Emily was not the right person for me. And her condition was dragging me down. Let mommy rest while we grab a few cocktails. What do you say? I asked the nurse out on a date. That evening, we ended up in bed together. Our affair developed very quickly. Young, hot, and full of energy, Rachel gave me a new life. Dancing all night long, very few hours of sleep, doing sports, and lots of other entertainment. Finally, I reached my goal. I felt young. I told Emily about feeling for divorce while she was still recovering at the hospital. I handed her all our sevens so I could finally get rid of that burden. However, after a while, I started experiencing some difficulties. It was getting harder and harder for me to get out of bed in the morning. I was having muscle spasms and terrible headaches from the lack of sleep. I blamed it all on the fact that my body was still getting used to my new life. I didn't have enough money either. Hmm? Because my new girlfriend had some astronomic demands. I was forced to walk at night at the bar. And soon my body couldn't take it anymore. When I woke up for another run, I felt really bad. A severe migraine made me dizzy. And it took me a long time to find my contact lenses. Hey, handsome! How long do I have to wait for you? To avoid embarrassing myself, I decided to ditch the lenses. We hadn't even made it past a block when I started having shortness of breath. I stopped mm -hmm. at the crossroad to rest and regain some strength. At that moment, a minivan <gasps> turned around the corner. 
and I didn't notice it due to my poor eyesight. Thank God I got away with just a few scratches and a minor scare. The car slowed down and Rachel managed to pull me onto the sidewalk. But what happened next was worse than any accident. My young girlfriend didn't expect me to turn into a pathetic old man and decided to dump me right at the hospital. I'm sorry, but you're dragging me down. I finally realized that I couldn't hide my age and went back to Emily. After all, she had always been fine with it. Too late. I found someone who thinks not just about himself, but also about me. Without love, money, or my fake youth, I ended up going back to working at the nursing home. While looking at those people, I understood that I'm not the future. The future is something good that I can leave behind long after I'm gone.